In this class, I am going to discuss Newton's first laws of motion. It is also called as law of inertia. So let's see the definition of uh, Newton's first laws of motion. What does it say? A body continues to be in its state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line or direction of motion unless it is acted upon by some external force to change the state. So you need to know that I have circled the state. So there are three states that I am discussing. What is that? State of rest state of uniform motion along a straight line and state of direction of motion. So let's take the an example to explain this concept. What does it say? Newton's first law, first law of motion states that a body continues to be in a state of rest. So I have, let's take I have I am having a table. I am placing a block. The block continues to be in a state of rest unless it is acted on by an external force. So a, a, like let's take I have a table I place the block the block continues to be on that table or at rest what is rest rest means the velocity is 0 meters per second so the ball the, the box continues to be at rest unless it is acted on by an external force let's take another example for the rest uh, for the uniform motion along a straight line okay so let's take I have a floor a frictionless floor I am using a frictionless floor for a particular reason I have a frictionless floor a ball is rolled on the frictionless floor at a, speed, at a velocity of 10 meters per second the ball continues to move at a velocity of 10 meters per second unless it is acted on by an external force that is according to the Newton's first laws of motion a body or a ball that is rolled over a floor a frictionless floor continues to move at a velocity of 10 meters per second unless it is acted on by an external force that is it moves in a straight line okay next part i want to discuss is that let's take i have a ball that is rolling on the floor it cannot change its direction unless it is acted on by an external force so there are three states that i'm discussing that is state of rest state of uniform motion in a straight line and the direction of motion so it is also called as law of inertia so what is inertia in the absence of an external force the inability of a body to change its state by itself is called as inertia. There are three types of inertia that is inertia of rest, inability of a change, in, in, inability of a body to change by itself its state of rest. So as I have already discussed that a box on a table continues to remain on the table or at rest unless an external force acts on it. Okay, that is the basic definition of inertia of rest, inertia of motion. Inability of a body to change by itself its state of uniform motion. As I've already given an example, a ball is ro rolling over a floor at a speed at a velocity of 10 meters per second. The ball continues to move at a velocity of 10 meters per second unless an external force acts on it. In the same way, inertia of direction. Let's take a body is moving at a 10 meters per second in a particular direction. It cannot change its direction unless an external force acts on it. So this is the basic introduction to Newton's first laws of motion. Let's see what is Newton's second laws of motion. Let us discuss Newton's second laws of motion. Before I discuss the Newton lesson second law of second law of motion, uh, I would like to discuss about Newton uh, momentum, the concept of momentum or linear momentum. So what does it say? The total quantity of motion contained in a body and is measured as the product of mass of a body and its velocity. So momentum is basically denoted as P, P bar. And what does it says? It is mass into velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity because it's a product of mass into velocity. Now let us see what does the second law of motion says us. Newton's second law of motion says that the time rate of change of momentum, linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force applied on the body and the change in momentum takes place in the direction of force. Now let us see how to go about with this. Now here it says that the direction of force means if when I apply a force it says that the change of momentum. So I have a body, the body is moving at a velocity v and I apply a force, what happens? The velocity changes and when there is a change in velocity, what happens? There is a change in momentum. So it says that the rate of change of momentum, why did the momentum change? Because there is an external force and that change of momentum is directly proportional to the external force. So F bar is directly proportional to dP bar by dt. So let's take this as F bar is equal to K into 
dp bar by dt k is proportionality constant so it says that the rate of change of momentum or linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the uh, applied force so i am taking f bar is equal to k k is proportionality constant for the purpose of explanation i'll take this k is equal to 1 so i will take this as f bar is equal to dp bar by dt now let's substitute that formula here f bar is equal to d mv bar by dt now we know from the standard definition the, uh, the formula for uh, differentiation d by dx of uv is equal to u dv by dx plus v du by dx now let's substitute here and let's see what's going to happen here. f bar is equal to d m f bar is equal to m dv bar by dt plus v bar dm by dt since mass is constant the differentiation of uh, mass is zero so it turns out to be f bar is equal to m dv bar by dv bar by dt so what is dv bar by dt dv bar by dt is rate of change of velocity and what is rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity indicates acceleration so it turns out to be f bar is equal to m into a bar this can be written in component form let's write it f bar is equal to m into a x i bar plus a y j bar plus a z k bar now what is a x a x is magnitude of acceleration in i direction or x axis a y is magnitude of acceleration in y direction or j axis and here a z is what magnitude of acceleration in z axis that is k direction so this can be further written as f bar is equal to f x i bar plus f y j bar plus f z k bar so what is the purpose of second loss of motion second loss of motion helps us to understand the measurement of force so we are able to measure the force we using this formula what is the measurement of force the standard formula that we use in our future ma force is equal to mass into acceleration is something that is derived out of this second loss of motion newton second loss of motion okay now let's discuss newton third loss of motion let us discuss newton's third law of motion so what is the definition of newton's third law of motion it says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so we need to understand the point here is that action and reaction are forces so let us see note one and note two what does the note one says forces of action and forces of reaction are always equal and opposite note two is very important forces of action and force of reaction never cancels each other out because they always act on different bodies i'll give a simple example to explain this let us take a block b and i am placing a block a onto it so you we can see block a is on block b now force block a exerts a force on b and b gives a reaction to it let us let us write like this f a b b the force exerted by a onto the b that's the weight in reaction what is the reactive force f b a that is f b a will be f b a is the force exerted by b onto a we can see that a and b are two blocks they are at rest that means they are not moving there is no external force acting on it so what are the two forces f a b is the force acting on b from a and what is f b a f b a is the force exerted by b onto a we can see that f a b is equal to minus f b what is my negative indicates is the opposite direction that is both are see both forces are not cancelling out because f a b is acting on block b and f b a on block a that's the exact reason i am talking about the note to forces of action and force of reaction never cancels out each other that is forces of action what is the action force here f a b and what is the reaction f b a they are not cancelling out because 
they are in the they are acting on see if FAB is acting on block B and FBA is acting on block A. They are acting on two different bodies. Now, what is the application of this particular Newton's third law of motion? I will give a simple example to help you understand that. See, we walk according to the principles of third law of motion. I will just help you understand. Give a simple example. See, how do I walk? I exert a force, I apply a force in this direction, applied force, see if I want to move front, how do we walk, we walk, we push, we push back, we push to the ground in certain, in certain direction, we push and in reaction what do we get, in reactory the reaction, this is a reaction, reaction from the ground it will be opposite to it. So, we can see, we can resolve this into two components. Let us take this is theta, this is, uh, this is horizontal component, this is vertical component. So, this is R. So, we can, this is R, let, let be R is the force. So, this is R cos theta. If you take the component onto it, R cos theta, R sin theta. So, we can see how do we work? See, I apply a force in this particular direction and let us take it is making an angle theta with the horizontal. So, we can see that in as a reaction the ground exerts a force R and this helps me to move forward and this can be resolved into two components that is horizontal R cos theta and vertical R sin theta. Now, R cos theta helps me to move forward and this acts against the weight. So, this is the basic uh, idea that I can give for Newton's third law of motion, then we will go to the next topic.